If your soil has turned into lifeless dust no matter how much compost, mulch, or fertilizer you throw at it, there's a hidden reason. It's not the lack of nutrients or organic matter, it's the absence of a single class of microbes that old farmers relied on before synthetic fertilizers existed. These microbes were once everywhere in fertile fields, quietly digesting organic residues and feeding plants directly at the root level, but decades of tilling, chemical use, and bare soil exposure wiped them out from most home gardens. The microbe you're missing is Actinomycetes, the ancient soil builder that bridges the gap between bacteria and fungi. Without it, soil structure collapses, decomposition slows, and plants struggle to absorb minerals even from rich compost. Actinomycetes are the link between dead matter and living humus. Actinomycetes are filamentous bacteria that look and act like fungi. They thrive in the transition zone between raw organic waste and finished humus, releasing enzymes that break down cellulose, chitin and lignin, materials that most common microbes can't digest. They're responsible for the distinct earthy smell of healthy soil. When you smell that fresh soil aroma after rain, that's actinomycetes at work. Without them, compost piles take longer to mature. And even if you add organic material to your soil, it just sits there instead of transforming into crumbly, sponge-like humus. Farmers in the past didn't need to know their names, they simply maintained them through traditional methods like slow composting, manure aging, and constant mulching. Modern gardening habits starve actinomycetes of what they need to survive. Actinomycetes need air, moderate moisture, and carbon to thrive but many gardeners either smother them with overly wet compost or destroy them with dry, compacted beds. Synthetic fertilizers and pesticides also harm them, because these chemicals alter soil pH and kill the organic residues these microbes depend on. Tilling makes things worse by breaking apart the microfilaments that act like scaffolding in the soil. Once they're gone, the soil loses its structure, turns crusty on top, and becomes unable to hold water or nutrients. That's why even fertile beds start producing weaker plants after a few seasons of chemical feeding or overworking. Alright, so the simplest way to bring them back is by reintroducing their natural food and habitat. To rebuild Actinomycetes colonies, your soil needs, well, a balance of air, organic matter, and mild alkalinity. One of the most effective ways is to create what's called a carbon fermentation layer. You start by spreading a two-inch layer of shredded brown material, such as dry leaves, chopped straw, or wood shavings, across your bed. On top of that, sprinkle a thin layer of animal manure or nitrogen-rich compost, about half an inch thick. Moisten it lightly so it feels like a wrung-out sponge. Actinomy seats thrive in the zone where carbon meets nitrogen, so layering like this gives them the perfect food gradient to expand naturally. Then, Cover this with another inch of soil or mulch to protect it from sunlight. You can also activate their growth using a natural microbe inoculant made from decomposing organic matter. Mix one cup of aged compost, a tablespoon of molasses, and a liter of unchlorinated water. Let it ferment in a loose-lidded container for, oh, five to seven days, until it smells earthy. Then, dilute it with ten parts water and pour it directly over your mulch layer. This homemade brew feeds the actinomycetes and helps them spread through your soil, reapply every two weeks during the growing season. Within a month, you'll start noticing richer soil color, softer texture, and an earthy smell returning, the surest sign that your soil's microbial engine is switching back on. Why Actinomycetes are the foundation for nutrient cycling and disease control. Healthy Actinomycetes populations don't just break down debris, they release antibiotics and natural growth hormones that suppress harmful fungi and soil-borne diseases. Plants grown in soil rich with these microbes show stronger roots, thicker stems, and improved resistance to wilt and rot. The microbes produce compounds like geosmin and streptomycin, which protect roots from pathogens. That's one reason why old compost heaps rarely developed fungal diseases, despite being full of decaying material. The microbes act as both decomposers and defenders. In practical terms, this means that instead of constantly adding external inputs, you can build a self-renewing soil cycle. 
Once actinomy seats establish, they maintain humus balance by decomposing crop residues faster than they accumulate. Their fine mycelial networks physically bind soil particles together, preventing erosion and compaction. Over time, the ground holds moisture longer and resists crusting, allowing deeper oxygen exchange and continuous microbial renewal. How to maintain actinomycetes populations once you've restored them. After you've revived your soil, keeping these microbes alive is simple but requires consistency. Avoid digging or tilling deeply. Just mix amendments into the top three inches of soil. Keep the surface covered year-round with mulch, preferably a mix of carbon-heavy and nitrogen-light materials such as shredded leaves, hay, or straw. Every three months, top dress with a thin layer of compost and moisten with microbe-rich water. Molasses diluted in water at a ratio of 1 tablespoon per liter works well. This maintains the aerobic balance these microbes depend on. So, it's important to avoid chemical fertilizers and herbicides since they can actually destabilize microbial populations in your soil. Instead, try using natural feeds like fish emulsion, worm tea, or compost extracts. These options are mild enough to nourish the microbes while still feeding your plants. And, during dry spells, remember to water deeply but less often. This approach lets oxygen return between watering cycles. The main goal here is to maintain moisture, but without creating those anaerobic pockets that can suffocate microbial life. Once actinomycetes return, your soil really starts healing itself naturally. A lot of gardeners describe this transformation as if the soil just wakes up. You'll see compact beds begin to loosen, earthworms making a comeback, and composted residues disappearing much faster between planting cycles. Plus, you'll notice fewer fungal problems, better seed germination, and stronger root systems across all your crops. What's really happening beneath the surface is a quiet restoration of balance. The very same microbial symphony that powered ancient farmlands for centuries before industrial inputs ever existed. The missing microbe isn't some modern discovery, it's actually an ancient partner we've just forgotten how to care for. If your garden has stopped thriving, even with organic inputs, it's probably time to bring back the foundational life form that made soil fertile long before modern science could even explain it. So, start by feeding them, not just your plants. Within one season, you'll see the difference in every handful of soil you lift. To learn more proven methods for rebuilding dead ground into fertile living soil without expensive inputs, make sure to subscribe to Hydro Haven and share this video with gardeners who are ready to revive their land the way farmers once did, through the living power of microbes.